Welcome to a VCV Rack video tutorial. This tutorial is part of a challenge to build tutorials in VCV Rack that exemplify sample hardware patches from the Depfer Corporation, which is a company that makes modular synthesizer hardware. My name is Cy Ball. There are links in the description below for the VCV Rack, for the VCV Rack manual, for some very good tutorials by Omri Cohen and a link to download this sample patch. Our job today is to get BCV Rack to listen to our MIDI keyboard, translate the MIDI signals to a sound wave coming out of our computer speakers. A collection of modules connected by wires is called a patch, and we will be creating a patch. We will only be using modules which are delivered with the BCV Rack installed. The core modules and the fundamental modules are the plugins we'll be using. Two things we need right away are a connection to our MIDI keyboard and a connection to our computer sound system. Right click on the gray area of VCB Rack and pick the core modules and pick audio to get an audio connection. We'll move it over here. You then click on the top entry and pick what you need for your sound driver. I'll pick direct sound for my Windows system. Then click the device area to install a driver for the default devices. Then right click again, go to core again, and pick MIDI. MIDI 1 is the connection we'll use to our USB MIDI keyboard. In Windows, this is pretty simple. It's already set up for me. I hope it works well for you. Now, the next thing we need is an oscillator. An oscillator is a device that creates the sound waves or the signals for the sound waves that we'll be using. If I right click again, go to fundamental this time, click VCO1. That is voltage control oscillator. It is controlled by voltages that come from a keyboard or other sources and go into the V oct input. The control voltage from MIDI to the VCO is what is called a voltage per octave. The range of voltage is 0 to 10 volts, and each 1 volt range is an octave, and within that 1 volt are the notes that you'll be using. Let's add an amplifier, or we'll call it a volume control for this application. So VCA is a voltage controlled amplifier. We'll take the VCA1. We then drag a patch cord from the sign output to the input of the VCA. Oh, we ought to lower the volume. This is a drag slider switch on the VCA. Now drag a patch cord to the first channel, channel 1. You can drag another one to channel 2 to get a stereo output. If you hold down control and drag from the output of the VCA, you get another cord. You could also have dragged a cord from the input of the audio back to the output. Now we get a sound, so we know that part's working. I want to take a moment to uh, tell you about the sounds that come from many oscillators. These four sounds we have here, sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave, and square wave are, are very common in uh, synthesizers. If we go to the fundamental modules again, and this time select scope, we can look at the shape of these waves as well as hear them. 
As you can see, we have a sign. Let's stretch it out a little. Okay, very, very simple. If we move this patch cord to the triangle, it's more triangular. Well, not quite straight lines. That's because this VCO is modeling an analog signal, which can't really draw straight lines very well. If we click the analog to digital switch to go to digital, you see all of a sudden this becomes very straight. Most people prefer to model the analog and keep it this way, so it'll sound more like a real hardware device. Let's move the patch cord over to the saw wave. A little bit like a saw wave in shape. If we looked at it in digital mode, we see it is uh, more like a saw wave. This is louder, a little more obnoxious. Let's move it to the square wave. Not very square looking at all. If we look at the digital, you see it does become square. The thing about, you, you should remember about a square wave is you can also adjust the width of the pulses just by moving the P width knob in the oscillator. Also, you should know that the knobs and switches normally will go to their initial value if you just right click them. All right, that's all we need for that. We can hover over a plug-in and press delete and it'll go away. As, and so will the patch cords that go to it. It's kind of nice. Now the job is to connect to the keyboard. If we drag to the V perox from the CV of the MIDI and press a key, you can see that the sound changes. It's not quite like a real instrument though, it never stops. It just keeps going going. It doesn't have any real uh, interest in the sound. Let's see if we can change that by adding something called an envelope. Uh, in the fundamental modules, we have an envelope generator called an ADSR. Let's right-click, go to fundamental, pick the ADSR. ADSR, get rid of that for a moment. ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. The attack is the amount of time, usually in milliseconds, that it takes to go from zero volume to the maximum volume. The decay is the amount of time it takes to drop from that maximum to the sustained volume, which will be held more or less while you hold the key. When you release the key, the release is the amount of time it takes the volume to fade away. This ADSR needs to know when you press the key. We do that by moving a patch cord from the gate output of the MIDI to the gate input of the ADSR. And then to control the volume in this case, We'll drag a patch cord from the output of the ADSR to the CV control voltage of the VCA. Now, when we drag up the volume switch, you notice we don't hear anything it's because no key is pressed and the ADSR knows it. If we press the key, we get a sound. Now, perhaps we don't want it to sound quite like that. We want to change its sound. We can... The shorter the attack time, the more pluckier or hammer sounding that you'll get on your note. Also, if you shorten the sustain to a lower volume to be held, And at the same time, lower the decay, you get a 
even a more sharp sound. And holding it, it'll go away. But if we take the sustain all the way down, all we really get is the... We don't hear the note. We just hear a key, kind of. Now we go back. Now how about the release? Well, how, do, how will that impact us? If we move this over this way... It's nice that this VCA shows us what happens there. Let's move the sustain back up. All right. Now, if you move the VCA down, then the maximum can't go any higher than that. And it'll be rather relevant. So that's your basic connection. Uh, I hope this taught you a little bit. And we hope to do some more in the future. Thank you very much. I'm Cyball. Play with this. Put a scope on the output of the ADSR and watch it. Put a scope on the output of the VCA again and watch it as you hit keys. You'll and change to various outputs. We've just been doing the square. Let's do the sign. <laughs>